Hi, today we are going to read Front oh. Desk chapters 56 and 57. I'm combining these chapters because 56 is only one page. So chapters 56 and 57 by Kelly Yang in Front Desk. Chapter 56. They didn't say a word at first. I thought perhaps they were too shocked. Sometimes when I'm too shocked, I can speak e I can't speak either. That's why I write things down, and even then, sometimes I can't bring myself to deliver them. Like my thank you letter to Jason, which was still sitting at the bottom of my backpack. I thought maybe my parents were just taking their time too, taking their time to find the right words, but then I looked up and I saw my mother's disappointment. You're not going to win, she said. Her voice was certain, positive. She looked right at me, her eyes a mixture of pain and sadness, but not sad like, I'm sad you're not going to win. Sad like, I'm sad you actually thought you could win. I wanted to grab her and shake her. You're wrong, Mom. I'm not a bike. You'll see, I yelled. My mom put her hands on, her, on my arms. No, honey, she said. I mean, those sweepstakes are all rigged. The news slapped me across the face. For a second, I was fully blind, and then I flat out denied it. It's not rigged. No, of course not, my dad jumped in. But just think about it. Why would they just give away a motel like that, said my mother. Because they're old, I said. They don't care about the money. They're doing it out of the goodness of their heart. Have you ever seen anybody in this country do something out of the goodness of their heart, she said. The doctor who fixed you up, remember him? My mother's face softened, and she didn't talk about the contest being rigged after that. Still, the doubt lingered with me. What if she was right? Chapter 57 Mr. Yow came over the next day, poring over the numbers and figures in the big ledger with an intensity I have never seen before. He took over the entire front desk, making calls and pounding so madly on the calculator, I thought it might break. I didn't really want it to be the same want to be in the same room with him after what had happened with the jeans, but I stayed behind so I could put the blue baseball cap on the table. Mr. Yao looked up from the ledger. He pointed at the blue baseball cap. That used to be the old manager's, he said. I didn't say anything. I didn't feel like talking to Mr. Yao, and especially not about the hat. His name was Ye Fi, but he called himself Jerry, he continued. He picked up the hat and chuckled to himself. I remember when he got this hat. He didn't even know what the Yankees were. So why did he get it? I wondered out loud, instantly frowning, because I had broken my vow never to talk to Mr. Vow again. Darn it. He liked the way the Y looked. His name starts with Y, he said. Mr. Yao put the cap back on the desk and looked into the distance. He was a good guy, that ye. Very hard worker. Wait, what? Had I heard that right? The two before him, totally useless. Incompetent, doesn't even cut it. They couldn't do a single thing without calling me, he said, shaking his head. How many managers have you had, I asked him. Oh, I don't know. I don't count these things. And we were back. These things. But he was a good one, that ye. I wondered for a second how Mr. Yao would talk about us after we left for Vermont. How would he take the news? Sooner or later, they'll all leave, Mr. Yao answered with a sigh, as if he had read my thoughts. Maybe if he, if I, maybe if he was nicer to them, they wouldn't leave, I thought. As I gazed at Mr. Yao, his face hardened by all the years and managers who had come and gone, I wondered what Mr. Yao was like when he had first started out. Was he less of a jerk or the same? I wished I could ask him. The phone disrupted my thoughts. Mr. Yao grabbed it, and in an instant, he was back to his usual no-nonsense. No You're only as good as your last envelope self. Bobby, no, listen, I'll get you the money, he said into the phone, waving me away to give him some privacy. I went into my room and replayed what Mr. Yao had said about the old manager in my head. A part of me hoped he would say good things about us after we left, even if he never said them to us. 
The next week, the letter I'd been waiting for arrived. I held it in my trembling hands, staring and staring at the words, Vermont Motel Giveaway Committee, terrified of what it might contain. Hank, I shouted, it's here. As the weeklies and my parents piled into the manager's quarters, Hank stood up and cleared his throat. Everyone, I think that we can all agree that little Mia here has changed our lives. Each and every one of us in this room, Hank said. Heads nodded. Here, here, Billy Bob said. Mrs. Q reached over and gave my hand a squeeze. Well, now it's her turn. Today, our girl's life is going to change, and it's about time, I say, Hank exclaimed. Woohoo! Fred cheered. Hank took his glass of cream soda and held it up. To Mia! Everyone held up their glasses. To Mia, the room boomed. I looked around the room, the corners of my eyes wet with gratitude. Love welled inside me as I smiled back at the weeklies. Here we were, strangers from all corners of the world, blown to the Cala Vista by the winds of life, only to find each other and reemerge as a new family. Thanks, you guys, so much, I said. I thought about how much I was going to miss the weeklies, in Vermont, especially Hank. A lump formed in my throat. Hank pointed at the envelope in my hand. May I do the honor? He asked me, and I nodded. He took the envelope from me. This is it, people. Hank rubbed his hands together. We all held our breath as Hank opened the envelope. My heart raced so hard, I thought it might come flying out. As Hank unfolded the letter, my mother put her fist to her teeth, her knuckles the color of porcelain, my father's knees were on the floor, his hands folded together, eyes on the ceiling. Thank you for applying for the Vermont Motel giveaway, Hank read. We've read every single entry over very carefully, and we regret to inform you. Hank's smile vanished. What? What is it, I asked. Hank put the letter down, and I knew. And that's the end of chapter 57. We'll have to see what happens next.